Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we are going to be unboxing, setting up, and doing some test prints with the newest Ender out there, the Ender 3 S1. This is an exciting new printer from Creality, and I cannot wait to set this thing up. Let's get started. Okay, so before we go ahead and put this together, I wanted to run through some of the features on this printer, and they're pretty spectacular for the price. So right off the bat, we get a direct dual gear drive, so you could be printing flexible filaments, TPUs, all kinds of stuff like that. It has a CR touch bed leveler with a metal tip, which is nice. It has dual Z access drive, so you get better stability, better print quality. It comes with a magnetic flexible build plate too, so boom, you don't need to upgrade that. It has a runout sensor, it has 32-bit silent motherboard, and I can attest to this, I've been printing a lot with it, and this thing is super, super quiet. It also has a 4.3 inch LCD that is super responsive. It's got a big knob that you turn and push to access whatever you wanna do. I was really, really happy with that. The bed size is a heated 220 by 220 by 270. So standard for a sort of small printer like this. It also has an XY tightening belt that really helps you dial in those settings to get the best print possible. And you get all of the stuff we just talked about, plus some other stuff we're gonna be looking at as we go through the video for 420, 430 USD. And that is a really good price for this printer in my opinion. I've been printing a lot with it and I'm really enjoying it. So let's stop talking about it. Let's go ahead and start putting this together and looking at some prints. Okay, so let's go ahead and crack this guy open and start putting it together. So this is the newest Creality printer and it has some really exciting upgrades that I am looking forward to trying out. Uh, so far, packed really well. Uh, a little tip right off the bat, some retraction settings and some distance and things like that. So that is really nice. We're gonna set that over here. Some foam. Now I save this stuff because when I go to conventions and I bring models and stuff, I use this stuff uh, to cut out shapes to be able to pack things well, and or if I'm gonna ship out, uh, say a product or something like that. So, just a tip. So we've got our tool bag here. Let's take a look what's in here. I think we've got the standards. We've got a new spatula. Again, that's always great. What else do we have? Some clippers, nozzle cleaner, and just here's our screws for putting this together. 8 gig card and all our Allen wrenches. So just the normal typical stuff. We've got the instructions and a quick start guide. So that's nice. A couple stickers. It also comes with just a tiny spool of filament. I mean, honestly, I guess why bother giving this? But now the first exciting thing out of the box for me is this. This is the direct drive extruder. That's right, the Ender 3 SI is a direct drive printer. This is gonna let you do all types of exotic filaments like uh, flexible filaments, different types of TPU. Uh, it'll let you do sort of uh, that, the rougher sort of compositing materials that have little bits of metal and things like that in it. This thing, I am super excited to try out. So we're gonna set this guy over here. Uh, some little pieces, parts. This is to hold the monitor on, the little uh, display on. What else do we have? We've got the uh, sensor. This is the filament runout sensor because it also has one of those. We have a the holder for the filament and the uh, monitor. I keep saying monitor. I mean display, the printer display. Next on the list is the dual, oh this is nice, dual gear, dual drive, Z access. This is really exciting, a lot more precision here. And again, all aluminum, all really well put together. And we're gonna be going over all the pieces parts in more detail as we go along. And last but not least, 
the base. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start putting this guy together, and I'm gonna highlight some of the different, you know, really important features and upgrades that this Ender 3 has gotten. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting this guy together. I took a quick glance at the instructions. Seems pretty cut and dry. FYI, if you are a fan of instructions, and if you are someone of a man of a certain age, such as myself, uh, even with uh, progressive lenses, <laughs> Uh, I have a very, very hard time reading this. So that's just a quick FYI to all you guys out there uh, and, and uh, women. These are really hard to read. They're <laughs> very, very tiny. But I think I can get this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the direct drive uh, extruder and we're going to put it on right here. Now, I did have a bit of an issue. This uh, the, the white wire, the wire going from this board into the a heater block was a little sort of askew, so I had to sort of bend it, you know, gently so it wouldn't snap, so that it would definitely allow me to seat this in there. And uh, once that happened, it easily uh, fit right there, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this on with the four M3 screws that it's said to use. But first, let's take a quick look at it. This is a really solid unit. I was really impressed with the craftsmanship of this. It's got this great sensor with a metal tip, so you're not going to have it snapping off and have to replace it. The fan's got a metal shroud, heat sock. Uh, pretty, pretty nice uh, unit altogether. Screws go in very easy, and they even give you, of course, a little bit of cable management here that will come in handy later. So now it's time to put the gantry assembly on and the screws go in from the bottom. So I'm just going to tilt it like this. And what I did was I started two screws, put them in really, really easy. It was no problem whatsoever. Kept them loose. And now I'm just going to flip it over, put the other two screws in and tighten everything up. And then we'll head on to the next part of the instructions. All right, let's put the display mount on. It is a pretty big mount because it is a big LCD and put the display on. As you can see, it's really going to be quite easy. It's got these pins in the back. They'll go right into these slots. Your cable connection. Let's go ahead and connect that cable right off the bat. I think it'll make it easier for us. Put the pins in the slots. Give it a little push. Locks right into place. Really, really cool. Like I said, it's a 4.3 inch screen, so it's huge. you got a dial and a push to select. One of the other things I really think is neat is it has the voltage reminder right on the screen. So it's saying, don't forget to check the voltage before you plug this thing in. I'm going to leave it so I don't forget, but I think that is really, really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the filament spool holder, which is right here. And of course, here's the arm. And this is actually the filament runout sensor. So we need to make sure that it is facing this way towards the display because there's the plug for it and we just slip it on here find the grooves in the back and give it a push and it'll lock into place there we go now don't be alarmed or try to tighten the filament runout sensor it has to be able to move like this so that it can track with the hot end as it's printing and move the filament along so we're going to make some connections and of course our first connection is there then in the back there's a connection area now i really love these little rubber you know stoppers it put in to sort of protect these connections in you know for dust and dirt when it's traveling so we're going to plug in one of the motors the filament runout sensor you can see there's a middle one for an extension interface we'll see what that is down the line but since i don't have anything to plug in it now i'm going to plug this rubber stopper back in to keep it protected now we're just going to go ahead and plug in some of the motors and again real simple installation here but i was very impressed with all the connections and here is that cable management system i was talking about earlier i'm so glad they provided something like this it holds it in nice and steady now, so far, the only problem I have with this printer is the drawer. There's really nothing for your fingers to grab onto, so it's kind of hard to open, but that is very minor. Another nice detail is this little divot where the SD card goes. It really makes it easy to slide that card in, but this is fantastic. A magnetic flex plate with the printer. No need to upgrade. It comes with it. So many amazing upgrades on this printer already. Let's go ahead and change the voltage over to US and plug it in. And we're gonna remove a little warning here and I'm glad that's there and take off this protective film.
And let's take a quick look at the motherboard. You can see this has got the 32-bit silent stepper motors and some really nice cable management. We saw this in the Ender 7. I don't know, I love these clips that they're using for cable management. Okay, now before we go ahead and make any prints, check your hot end here and make sure that it is tight on the gantry. And we're just gonna use one of the provided tools and turn this nut which tightens those wheels, draws those wheels on to the rail to make sure we don't have any movement. You wanna make sure it slides easily with no movement to get the best possible print. You can also uh, adjust the belts uh, to make sure to really dial things in and I'll be doing that later. But now it's time to do some printing. Let's go ahead and get some filament in the runout sensor and bring it through that direct drive. And this is exciting to have a small printer like this with a direct drive. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Now the control box, uh, the LCD is pretty cool. It's uh, simple, it's got all the things. I love the size of this dial and how responsive it is. Uh, turns really easy. You push it in to go to where you want to be, and it's really, really responsive. I really like it a lot. So let's go ahead and start to heat this guy up because we're going to level the bed out to make sure that the print comes out nice. So we are heating up the bed. Now I like to heat up the bed in the nozzle before I do any auto leveling, just because, you know, this way, you know, things expand when they're heated up and we wanna make sure that they're gonna be in the right position to do this. Now you can see it's got that metal tip, which is great. I've broken so many BL touch tips, so it's really nice to see a metal tip on there. Again, really, really tight engineering here. And yes, I wish it was going this fast, but it isn't, I'm speeding it up for us. Uh, it does take you know the normal amount of time. I'm not saying that it's, uh, it took forever. I'm not saying it went really quickly, but uh, it moved through the paces fairly well. And uh, since it's such a small bed, you're not like you're waiting there forever. We're gonna do some minor adjustments. We're putting just a regular sheet of paper in there and we're moving it around and there's still some play there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the Z offset. And we're just going to adjust this up or down. It'll depend on where your bed started off at until there's, you know, no, you know, noticeable play. It drags a little bit. And once you hit that number, then you're going to go ahead and go to control and store that configuration so that for the next time when you make your print, it's all set. And I think I'm gonna print the little cat file. I like how he has his hand up waving at us. And then we're gonna take a look at how that print turned out. And so here is the cat. And I think it looks fantastic. Now, of course, this was the uh, G code that was right on the SD card, sliced by them. It looks fantastic. Some of my prints, again, they look fantastic as well. Now, I ended up using the Prusa Slicer because it came with the Ender 3 S1 settings in it. Um, they are right there as a choice, and I didn't have to sort of like come up with my own or go searching for them, although I'm sure I could have. Uh, and I was really pr pleased at how it sliced them, the quality of the prints. As you know, I finish most of my things and paint them, um, but I am thinking about um, printing and selling these little planters, like little sort of succulent planters and uh, I did a bunch of tests to see how this printer handled it and I could just pop these in the mail and send them right out and sell them so uh, I was uh, pleased I was pleased at the quality and I'd never used Prusa slicer and I was really really pleased with it. I I really enjoyed it now you might have guessed I've been digging this printer uh, I'm gonna be using this for a lot of my printing uh, just because I like all the extras now, one of the videos we're gonna be seeing in the future that I'm gonna be working on is actually going to be uh, printing a lot of flexible filament through it. I wanna test it out with flexible filament. I didn't have a chance to for this video because it's a little bit more of an advanced video, the settings. Uh, I also needed to order a bunch of different types of flexible filament. So I'm gonna be running different TPUs through it, some Cheetah stuff through it to really see what it can do. And I'm really excited about that. If you want to see that video, and if you like this video, go ahead and please and click like and subscribe, hit that little bell, and you'll know when those videos are going to come out. I hope you like this video. I hope you're having a great day, night, whatever. Take it easy, and I will see you in the next video.